a plus h comma b minus a plus c comma b divided by h right so <clears throat> that is essentially the de definition of partial derivative with respect to x and similarly we can define the partial derivative of the function f at the point a b with respect to y in which we are changing the value of the function at f of uh, the difference between f of a b and f of a comma b plus k and we divide by k so taking we are taking the slope basically in the second coordinate and then using these two values at that point we are we can define the the terminology that is known as the gradient gradient so let us see one uh, example of the partial derivatives or uh, basically the finding how to find the gradient so in this example Uh, we are considering the function f of x y that is defined to be x y divided by x square plus y square if our point is other than origin then value of the function is this and if the point where we are evaluating the function is origin then at that point the value of the function is zero so this is the given function and for this particular function we want to find the partial derivatives of f so find fx at zero zero and fy at zero zero so these are basically the partial derivatives of first order because we are differentiating f with respect to x one time and we are di differentiating the function with respect to y one time so they are first order partial derivatives so let us go by the definition itself so what is the definition of fx so fx at a comma b is defined as limit h approaches to zero f of a plus h comma b minus f of a b divided by h so this partial derivative we, we want to evaluate at zero comma zero so that means we are taking point a comma b is equals to zero comma zero for this function what for the function given in the example so therefore this definition will become when we take a is equals to 0 and b equals to 0 fx at 0 0 is limit h goes to 0 f of h comma 0 minus f of 0 0 divided by h so let us first write down the definition of uh, so here basically a comma b the given point where we are finding the partial derivative is 0 comma 0 because we are finding partial derivative at the origin so therefore by the definition of fx at a comma b the definition is limit h approaches to 0 f of 0 plus h comma 0 minus f of 0 0 divided by h so that is nothing but limit h approaches to 0 value of the function at h comma 0 minus f 0 0 divided by h so this is we just use the definition of the partial derivative at the given point 0 comma 0 we are getting this formula <coughs> now what we do is now we will find the value of the function at h comma 0 so h comma 0 means basically our point is on the x axis right h comma 0 is a point on the x axis so if you see the definition of the function if we take the point h comma 0 
so then h comma zero will be non-zero point, right? If h is not equals to zero, then the value of the function is h y divided by x square plus y square, right? And in that we will take y equals to zero and x equals to h. So let us see what is the defin by definition what we are getting. So we substitute x equals to h y equal to zero. So then it is h times zero divided by h square plus zero square. And value of the function at its origin is zero divided by h. Right. Just we are applying the function definition in this step. And uh, then what you said is uh, correct that this value is uh, anyway zero. So that is zero minus zero divided by h. Right. So anyway, this value is again limit of zero by h. So finally, we will get the, this limit is zero, zero itself. So this is the method how we define the partial derivative at a given point. So here it turns out to be zero because we are actually evaluating the value at the origin. All right, and the value of the function at along the x axis itself is zero. So therefore, we are getting value zero. So let us see. Uh, the the same way we can define f y at origin. So what is the d difference in the definition? Difference in the definition is that when we differentiate the function with respect to y, then we have to change the slope in the second variable basically. So b plus k will come and we are taking limit k goes to zero. So let us substitute this uh, uh, definition here. So we get limit k approaches to zero f of zero comma k minus f zero zero divided by k. So this is just we substituted in this definition a comma b is equals to zero comma zero. Right. So now what we'll do next is we'll find the value of the function at the points on the y axis because zero comma k is the point on the y axis. So again, we will use the definition of the function itself, x y divided by x square plus y square. So when we substitute that value, what we get is x is zero, y is k divided by x square plus k square minus f evaluated at zero zero, that is at origin the value of the function is zero divided by k, right? So once again, this also, this value is also zero. So zero minus zero by k, that is limit of zero, and that is itself is zero. <clears throat> so in this particular example, it turns out to be very simple because uh, the, the function itself uh, takes values zero on the x-axis and y-axis. So it turns out to be, uh, both the parcel derivative turns out to be the equals to zero, right? Uh, so that is what we uh, we have noted here. Now, um, what about what about the function? Is the function is is continuous at origin? So our function is x y divided by x square plus y square. <clears throat> so uh, we discussed the notion of limit path dependency and uh, the other definition of epsilon delta method. So using that, what can we say about uh, uh, this this given function? Whether whether this function is is continuous at origin or not the function x y divided by x square plus y square
सर वो सर कंटिन्यूस इट इज इट इज सर नहीं होगा सर नहीं होगा डेटा पे डिपेंड कर रहा होगा या सो इफ इफ यू टेक द पाथ अलोंग x इक्वल्स टू y लाइन then what can you say about the uh, the that part along y x line or y is equal to mx you can easily check that the the limit actually depends on the path because both iterated limits will be zero but if you take y equals to x then the function will becomes the uh, x uh, x square divided by 2x square and then x square we can cancel so limit will be half So therefore, limit depends on path. So the function is uh, not continuous at the origin. So that we can write in the remark that note that the function f x y is not continuous at the origin. Right. <clears throat> so what is happening basically is that here partial derivatives exist at origin but the function itself is not continuous at the origin so usually in the one variable case if the function is differentiable at the origin then the function should be continuous at that point so that is not happening with the partial derivatives so therefore uh, the notion of partial derivative is not basically the extension of the notion of derivative for two variables so we'll see later on that uh, uh, what is uh, yeah so so let us see what is uh, the definition of the uh, differentiable function for the two variable case So for one variable case, what is the definition of derivative? Derivative definition is if test we evaluate at x naught, that is limit x approaches to x naught, f x minus f x naught divided by x minus x naught. So essentially, what is happening here is that. Uh, when we take the difference of limit and the function so that is fx minus fx not minus f dash x not x minus not divided by x minus x not so basically i have taken difference of these two then its modulus approaches to zero as x approaches to x not right so this is essentially the definition of the derivative of the function in the first variable in the one variable case so this will give some hint that how to extend this definition for the two variable case so let us see that what is the def uh differentiability in two variables so the first condition what we uh, we need to check is the partial derivative exists so we say that a function <clears throat> f from the domain d to r Where d is a subset of R two, so this is a function of two variables. Is differentiable at the point x not comma y not. Uh, so basically, x not comma y not is the integer point.
so integer point x not y not if the following two conditions are satisfied the first condition is that our partial derivative should exist at x not y not so both the partial derivatives of first order so that is fx and fy <coughs> exist at the given point the so given point is x not y not right so that is the first condition and second condition is this limit exists so this is a two variable limit limit x not y not approach x y approaches to x not y not f x y minus f of x not y not minus f x x not y not x minus x not minus f y x not y not multiplied by y minus y not the whole this value is divided by square root of so this is length between x y with the x not y not so if this limit is zero this limit is zero and the first and uh, first order partial derivative exist at the given point then we say that our function is uh, differentiable as a two variable function right so this condition of the limit we need to check and uh, that condition of the limit is basically in two variables so so basically we need to check that condition we have to simplify the function this quotient whose limit we are finding as a two variable function and that two variable function its limit should be zero if the function is differentiable if li its limit does not exist then the function is not differentiable so we will see one example of this particular definition today and we will check that particular function or it is not differentiable so niche se ye aapne limit likhi hai sir isme under root me sir x minus x not square plus nahi hona chahiye pehle the length between x y and Uh, we are taking the length between x comma y with x not comma y not. हाँ तो सर फिर x minus x not square plus y minus y not square. If we if we take only single coordinate here, uh, suppose y and y not both are zero, right? Suppose y and y not both are zero, so that means we are on the x-axis. So in that case, we will get square root of x minus x not square. And what is the square root of x minus x not square? That is exactly modulus of x minus x not. So that is what we are getting in the one variable case. Right. so that way we can compare with the one variable by substituting y and y not to be both to be zero so essentially we are considering the function of only single variable sir i think he is saying that in second point uh, uh under root ke andar jo x minus x not whole square plus y minus y not square hona chahiye uh, just a minute yes yes you are right you are right so this is length so you are absolutely right i have done mistake so this is length so you are right it should be plus. correct okay so yeah thank you for the mentioning this <clears throat> yeah so what i was saying is different that uh, 
it is a generalization of one variable case but what you said is right the, the the denominator is exactly the length between x y with x not y not so that should be plus only right <clears throat> okay so let, let me let us take one example and verify this condition So let uh, the, the, the given function to be f is a function from r to r, which is defined by the function fxy is equals to modulus of xy. So what we need to do here is we need to check the differentiability. of the function f which is a function of two variable at the point origin right so <clears throat> we want to so our function is f of xy equal to modulus xy so for example uh, if we take uh, x equals to 1 and y equals to 0 uh, y equals to 2 then the value of the function will be modulus of 1 into 2. So that is 2 itself. All right. Uh, just a minute. <clears throat> so for this particular function, let us verify whether the partial derivative exists so we, we need to check that differentiate the function is differentiable at origin so therefore we need to check the parcel for the partial derivative exists at origin and we need to check this limit exists and it equals to zero when we substitute x not y not equals to zero comma zero let us start with uh, finding the partial derivative So first partial derivative is fx evaluated at 0, 0. That is limit h goes to 0. f at h comma 0 minus f 0, 0 divided by h. Okay. So this is coming directly from the definition of partial derivative with respect to x. So now, once again, the function is modulus of x, y. So when we substitute uh, x equals to h and y equals to 0 in this, we get h into 0 modulus minus the function value at 0 is 0 into 0 modulus divided by h. Right. So essentially what we get is limit h approaches to 0, 0 minus 0 by h. And again, in this case also we are getting value of the function to be zero so partial derivative function evaluated at origin its value is zero let us check the other derivative whether it exists or not so second partial derivative is limit k approaches to zero f of zero comma k minus f zero zero divided by k so now we are writing these things directly because uh, we know all this formula from the previous example. So now once again, when we substitute these values in the function itself, because our function is modulus of x into y, so here modulus of 0 into k is 0, then the value of the function at origin is 0 divided by k. So once again, this partial derivative also exists and it equals to 0. So therefore, the first condition of differentiability holds. Therefore, fx and fy exist, exist at, at the point x0, y0, which is nothing but 0, 0. So we verified the first condition of differentiability. Now the second condition of differentiability we will check. So for the differentiability at at the point x naught y naught 
equals to 0 comma 0 we need to check we need to check the condition <clears throat> so the condition is limit uh, so let us go back to the condition so our condition is this limit x y approach is 2 x not y not and x not y not is 0 0 for this particular example so therefore we'll check limit x y approach is to 0 0 f of x y minus f evaluated at 0 0 minus f x at 0 0 times x minus f y at 0 0 times y divided by square root x square plus y square so let us write down this thing that one what we need to check is limit x y approach is to 0 0 f x y minus f 0 0 minus f x at 0 0 into x minus 0 minus f y at 0 0 into y minus 0 divided by square root of x minus x naught square plus y minus y naught square this limit we need to check it should be zero if, if the function to verify the function is differentiable at the origin and uh, this condition if we simplify by substituting fx and fy then we know the partial derivatives are zero right fx at zero zero is equals to zero and f at zero zero is equal to zero so both the partial derivative at origin is zero so therefore basically this last two terms will become zero and f of zero zero is also zero so therefore this limit turns out to be limit x y approaches to origin of the function f of x y f of x y is modulus of x y all other terms in the numerator will be become zero and in the denominator we have x square plus y square all right so this particular condition we need to check here because fx and fy are zero zero fx and fy equals to zero and f of zero zero is also zero so what happened is our original function which was modulus of x y but to verify whether that function is differentiable at origin or not we need to check this particular condition second condition of the differentiability and that second condition of the differentiability it turns out to be the this particular limit so whether this limit is zero or not first thing is the limit should exist and second thing is limit should equal to zero if limit exists and it equals to zero then only we will say the function is differentiable right that is meaning of the second condition that not only this limit x y approaches to x not y not should exist but it also should equal to zero so then only then we'll say this limit exists and equals to zero and therefore the function is differentiable at x not y not so now we need to check whether this limit is exist and equals to zero or not so now this is a question of two variable function so can anyone suggest whether this fun this limit exists or not so any idea about uh, uh, in showing this function whether it's it is so i think it exists so that uh, So limit exists. Limit exists. So, yeah. so here the limit exists and uh, the limit we need to find actually. So how do, how do how do we show that limit exists? So we can try to find the limit. 
convert it into polar coordinates. So we can take y equals to mx. Y equals to mx. We cannot use to show the limit exists. Y equals to mx to show. Sir, by iterated limits. Sir, by converting to polar coordinates. The limit does not exist. But so th those are the steps. So you can try those 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 paths. Uh, iterated limits. If you find the iterated limit will become zero. Uh, limit along y equals to mx also uh, if you we will verify we will be able to check that the limit is zero along y equal to mx also so all the paths along uh, the limit is uh, zero itself so therefore from that we can conclude that limit does not exist right so those first steps we can try we can also try polar coordinates also okay so whatever uh, method you are comfortable you can use you can also use sequence approach to show that the limit exists right so here i am uh, doing it by the direct method of uh, epsilon method uh, delta epsilon method or you can also use the squeeze theorem so uh, basically squeezing kind of technique also we can use so what we are doing here is uh, we know that the this function if we use epsilon delta method then we need to uh, squeeze this theorem uh, this function by square root x square plus y square so what we'll do is uh, once again we'll use that modulus x is less than equal to x square and x square is uh, less than equal to x square plus y square or, or directly itself we can use uh, is less than equal to modulus y because mod x is less than equal to square root x square plus y square right and uh, <clears throat> then we know that modulus y is less than equal to once again the same inequality So therefore, essentially, delta is equals to epsilon works here, and uh, therefore, uh, we get for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists delta, which is epsilon we are taking, is that whenever zero less than square root x square plus y square less than delta. Uh, what we get is we get the value of the uh, value of the limit that is mod x y y x square plus y square is less than epsilon. So we need uh, uh, we require to show this statement and that holds with the delta equals to epsilon. If you take delta equal to epsilon because everything turns out to be in terms of square root x square plus y square. Right, so therefore limit exists. And uh, it equals to zero. And therefore, therefore the second condition of differentiability is satisfied. So therefore, the function f of x y is differentiable at the origin. Right. <clears throat> so the, the, the function itself is differentiable at the origin. So so this basically the differentiability depends on which point we are uh, checking the differentiability. So depending on that point and the value of the function, uh, let, us, let us revise the, the, the process of how to check the differentiability. So this function was given f of x y equal to modulus of x into y. We check its differentiability 
at the origin, you first check the partial derivative exists exist at origin or not. So if the partial derivative any of them does not exist, then basically we can't check the function is differentiable or not. Right. So first condition should be satisfied. And because that is required for finding this limit. If we don't know what is fx and fy at origin, we can't find uh, this limit and basically we can't check the differentiability at that point. And then for the differentiability, we need to check this limit exists and it equals to zero. And that also depends on what the function we are getting here, right? So what function we are, we are getting here depending on the given function, that limit we need to check. So it may happen that such a limit may be path dependent. In that case, limit does not exist and the function may not be differentiable at, at that particular point. <clears throat> so this is essentially the method to check whether the function is differentiable or not at that point. So any any doubt so far? So ye equal to zero kaise likha wo samajh nahi aaya. So so basically uh, to to show this this limit is zero, what we need to verify we need to verify modulus of f x y minus l is less than epsilon. So function is modulus x y divided by square root x square plus y square and l is zero. Limit is zero that we are checking so modulus of fxy minus l is nothing but okay. so, so, right? we, uh, we are checking here so this coming from uh, because uh, this is function and this is l modulus of fxy minus limit less than epsilon so l is zero here and so x square root x square plus y square are non-negative sir you upar sir aapne statement likha hai sir for every f being greater than zero yes uh, sir uh, there exists delta uh, greater than zero for the uh, symbol. This is uh, this means such that okay, sir. Okay, so usually uh, I use that symbol, and uh, later on, also you will see in the other mathematics courses, also we'll uh, use that particular symbol for uh, denoting the word such that. Okay. Okay. So, so then uh, let us go to the higher order of partial derivatives. So earlier we uh, we seen the method of finding the partial derivatives of first order. So that is f x and f y. And uh, now we will uh, discuss the uh, how to find the partial derivative of the second order, basically. So basically, uh, second order, second order partial derivatives. So second order partial derivatives uh, we have del f by del x function that is f of x so if we differentiate again with respect to x so then and evaluate at the point a comma b then that for this particular uh, second order partial derivative we simply denote it by f x x because we are different this is f x right in the earlier notation so f x we are differentiating again with respect to x 
and evaluate it at the point AB. So this is second order partial derivative of the function f with respect to x at the point AB and it is defined as limit h approaches to 0 fx at a plus h comma b minus fx at a comma b divided by h. All right. So this is essentially what we are doing to find fx x. We are differentiating fx with respect to x partially. So that means we are changing the first coordinate of the fx function. All right. So similarly, we can define similarly. Now, if we differentiate the function fx with respect to y, so then the notation is uh, fxy because first we are differentiating with respect to x, so that will come first, and second with respect to y. So by definition it is limit. Now we are differentiating fx with respect to y. So therefore we will get k go approaches to 0 fx at a comma b plus k minus fx at a comma b divided by k. So slope we are finding for the function fx in the second coordinate because we are differentiating with respect to y and then we are taking k approaches to 0. Right. So uh, this notation is uh, just uh, you, you need to be careful uh, initially. Later on you will be uh, you will be able to do this very easily. So let us try to find find out the partial derivatives of second order. So consider the function given by f of xy to be the function xy times x square minus y square divided by x square plus y square. If the point is other than origin. And if the point is origin, then the value of the function is 0 at origin. So what we want to show here is we want to check that f of xy at origin is not necessarily f of yx at origin. Right? So this we will be able to check if we will find what is the value of fx y at origin and f y x at origin. So we are, we are going to find this partial derivative. So what we defined is we define only fx x and fx y. Right? The other partial derivative can be defined similarly. So similarly. We can define fyy and fyx. So this was fx with respect to y, but if we do fy with respect to x, we can define similarly. So there we will first differentiate with respect to y, and then we will take the slope in the first variable, and we will take h approaches to 0. So let us write down what is this definition at the origin. So note that by the formula itself, the partial derivative fx with respect to y is nothing but k approaches to 0, fx at 0, comma k minus fx at 0, 0 divided by k. Right? And then we have fyx at origin that is nothing but limit h approaches to 0, fy at 0, 
H0 minus F squared origin divided by H. So this is coming directly by substituting 0 0 instead of A comma B. Right. So if you substitute uh, in this definition A comma B equal to 0 we get Fx at 0 comma K minus Fx at 0 0 divided by K. So that is exactly this definition. And this we can define similarly because we are differentiating fy with respect to x right so therefore we are taking slope in the first coordinate <clears throat> so now uh, to find out all these values what we need to find we need to first find the values of fx at 0 comma k and fy at h comma 0 so that means we need to find the value of the partial derivative of f with respect to x on the y axis and partial derivative of f with respect to y on the points on the x axis so let us find out that first so first we will find out that Find two values. First value is fx at 0, comma b and fy at a comma 0. Alright, so instead of h and k, I just replace it by a and b. Now because in the definition of fx and fy also we use h and k. So to avoid that confusion, we are just using a and b. Let us find out that. So so there we have already done some example how to find the partial derivative with respect to x so that is h comma b minus f of 0 comma b divided by h right so basically we are using this definition by taking a0 so then what it becomes it becomes limit h approaches to 0 f of h comma b minus f of 0 comma b divided by h right so that we are using here now we have to substitute the function so what is the function function is x y into x square minus y square divided by x square plus y square so what it will become limit h approaches to 0 h into b h square minus b square divided by h square plus b square at 0 comma b the value of the function will become 0 and divided by h right so finally what we get is uh, we can cancel this 2 h right and uh, uh, then h approaches to 0 so that means essentially what we'll get is minus b power 3 by b square that is minus b right so this is fx at 0 comma b and similarly we can find fy at a comma 0 so now we will use the partial derivative with respect to y definition at the point a comma 0 so by substituting b is equals to 0 what we get is limit k approaches to 0 so this is definition of partial derivative with respect to y at the point a comma 0 so once again first we will substitute the definition of the function so that is a into k a square minus k square divided by a square plus k square minus 0 divided by k right and now here k approaches to 0 so what it turns out to be is first k we can cancel and then we can substitute k is equals to 0 so what will happen is we will get a power 3 by a square 
and that is equals to a right so what we need to find we need to find the both the partial derivatives of second order and we already found now these two values so let us substitute it there so so therefore what we get is fxy at 0 0 is equals to limit k approaches to 0 fx at 0 comma k minus fx at origin divided by k now we substitute fx at 0 comma k instead of 0 comma b so what we get is limit k approaches to 0 minus so instead of minus b uh, we substitute b equal to k so we'll get minus k so fx at 0 k is minus k minus 0 divided by k so finally we get it equals to minus 1 and on the other hand the second partial derivative is uh, nothing but limit h approaches to 0 f y at h comma 0 minus f y 0 0 divided by h right and that is nothing but now f y at a comma 0 is a right so therefore f y of h comma 0 is h minus 0 f y at 0 0 is 0 divided by h so why f y at 0 0 is 0 because f if we substitute a equal to 0 then f y at 0 0 is a and a is 0 right so same computation we are using here to evaluate both the term so therefore the limit is 1 so now we can check that uh, therefore fxy at origin the value is minus 1 which is not equal to 1 which is value of the origin of fyx right so in this example we have seen that fx fy at a0 is not always 0 it is value is a depending on what a we are taking so so let me stop the recording